So this, this very place mm -hmm. is where the Colorado River once raged into the sea. Right. And it spread all the way to the mountains? Yeah, from here all the way across into Baja California to the mountains over there. Wow. This is just mud and tidal water, no, no river water. This endless mudflat was once the mouth of the Colorado River's delta. It covered an area the size of Rhode Island, nearly two million acres from Arizona to the Sea of Cortez. We journey into Mexico and discover for ourselves why a river must reach the sea and what happens when it doesn't. We are in the town of San Luis, Rio Colorado. I can tell you in just five minutes, our world has changed dramatically. Everything is different. Hello. Hola, Oswald. Mucho gusto. Muy bien. Oswald Hinojosa has been fighting for the Colorado for 15 years. As an ornithologist, he realized that birds disappearing as the river dried up indicated a wider environmental catastrophe and began his battle to restore flow to the dry riverbed. This area used to have a river flowing through it, and not just the water, but also a forest of cottonwood with trees with a lot of wildlife in it. And what is the sand? What, where does it come from? Well, basically, this is just uh, the erosion from the Grand Canyon. This is the Grand Canyon yeah, that I'm holding in my hands. That's right. Nosotros ahí nos bañaban, nos tiraron clavados de arriba los árboles hasta medio al río. Unos pescados muy grandes había. Estaban los bagres así, les digo. <laughs> y mojarra negra, pero así no nos estaba. Y ahora como el río ya, ya está secando, ya tío. Y los poquitos pescados que hay se están muriendo. Ay, qué susto. All but one-tenth of the Colorado's river is allocated to the seven U.S. states north of the border. What's left is extracted here at Morelos Dam, just inside Mexico. One of the recommendations for Mexico and Estados Unidos was to construct presas to derive the water that was going to be distributed to Mexico in the Colorado rivers. Practically all the water is assigned to the agricultural activities and urban activities. Around 10% of the water that is received in this area goes to the cities of Mexicali and Tijuana. Around 10% of the water that is received in this area goes to the cities of Mexicali and Tijuana. Around 10% of the water that is received in this area goes to the cities of Mexicali and Tijuana. Around 10% of the water that is received in this area goes to the cities of Mexicali and Tijuana. Around 10% of the water that is received in this area goes to the cities of Mexicali and Tijuana. Around 10% of the water that is received Excelente. And how far does this extend, this desert? Oh, for miles and miles. There are thousands of acres like this, just bare soil. Oh, so this really is dead land now? Pretty much. So there were steamboats here? Yes, there going was. Going up to Yuma? Going all the way to Yuma, from the Gulf of California. And trees and water? And yeah, a delta jungle. Is that Ostella, are we lost? Because <laughs> I feel lost. Eighty years ago, this was a wetland of forests and deep emerald lagoons. The mesquite and cottonwood forests, the marshes, the jaguar, deer, and countless birds and fish have all fled or disappeared forever. It took just one lifetime for upstream dams to stop the river and destroy it all. So here you get to see the joys of filmmaking in the Mexican desert. Rope and cable. Okay. We're buried to the frame on the back end.
We may have found our savior. ¿Tienes algo? ¿Una cuerda? Sí. Oh, gracias a ustedes. Sí. Y después, y después que ya que estén lo duro, tú le vas a frenar. Vamos a tocar. Okay. Juan Butrón was one of the first locals to discover the last major wetland in the Delta, and he has witnessed firsthand how water can restore life to this parched land. Para mí es muy importante porque allí se reproducen toda especie de, de, de peces. Allí van a desovar. Es importante para la naturaleza, para el medio ambiente. Y ya esa agua debe llegar al mar. In a small fishing village on the shores of the Sea of Cortez, the final chapter of the river's loss is told in disappearing fisheries and fractured communities. The loss of the river destroyed the nurseries of the Gulf, the Delta's estuaries where the life of the sea once flourished. Este, porque si, si, si esa agua llegaría para acá, también el, el, las curvinas o, los, o, o el camarón sube para arriba también, o me imagino que, que si, si soltaría mucho más el agua, se, se expandería más en, en todo lo que es aquí enfrente del Golfo, todo esto. De ahora que ya, que ya no, no hay agua, sí le batalla uno más para, para pescar. It has been over 50 years that it has no longer reached the sea. We forget that the river forms a connection between the Rocky Mountains and the Gulf of California. And we just think about the water that is needed in Mexicali or Las Vegas. We forget about the environment, we forget about the deltas, and for sure we forget about the sea. The sea really needs the water. Marine life really needs the water. It would take just over 1% of the river's flow and the Colorado would reconnect with the sea. River estuaries are the most productive parts of the world's oceans. When we lose them, we are all impoverished. <laughs>